A beautifully sunny day in Boston on this Patriots Day as the Toronto Blue Jays and the Boston Red Sox wrap up their four-game series from Fenway. Hi again, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo, and welcome to Red Sox Baseball. So much is made of the Red Sox roster at the end of spring training. Who will make the 25-man roster? But as always the case, when you get into the season, that roster changes so much. Sometimes a roster move a day, and the roster move has taken place today. The return of Hideki Okajima with... Felix Dubrant being optioned out to the Pawtucket Red Sox, so the Red Sox switch lefties in their bullpen. Okajima did not allow a hit in three of his five appearances with the Paw Sox and had at least one strikeout in four of his five games. He was pitching well. He posted a 5.14 ERA in seven games this spring. That's when he wasn't pitching very well, which came on the heels of his 4.50 ERA and disappointing season last year. His next appearance and first of this year will be the 255th of his Red Sox career. He has a career earned run average of 3.0. Six. We welcome in Jerry Remy and Jerry. Some of the Red Sox are starting to get it going, and yesterday Jacoby Ellsbury had a good day. Uh, he certainly did with the home run. You know, he's still batting below 200, but yesterday Jacoby Ellsbury's had a big home run in that ball game to give the Red Sox a little bit of a comfort zone. He gets a fastball right down the middle of the plate here from Jesse Lynch. And of course, when he gets his arms extended, he has very good power. Third home run of the season for Ellsbury. He leads the Red Sox in that category. But I think they'd like to see Jacoby hit a little a few more line drives and ground balls. Use that speed that he uses so very well when he's swinging the bat well. He's back in the number nine spot today. He's had some success, success against Ricky Romero. So hopefully today out of that nine spot he can continue to produce. But get on base a little bit more. He, You know, the home runs leave to somebody else. It's okay we get him right now because we give the Red Sox a little bit of a blanket, a little bit of a lead. But his game basically is line drives and ground balls. What a special day it is today in Boston as the 115th running of the Boston Marathon takes place right here along with Red Sox Toronto Blue Jays coming your way next. By AT&T, Kia, Jordan's Furniture, your New England Toyota dealers, and by Southwest Airlines. Hey, good afternoon once again, or good morning once again. Welcome back to Fenway Park, Red Sox and the 
Toronto Blue Jays wrapping up their four game series. Red Sox have taken the field, so let's check out the Blue Jays starting nine. Now Escobar, shortstop, leading it off. Corey Patterson is in center field, batting second. Jose Bautista in right field. It is Adam Lind at first base in a cleanup spot. Aaron Hill at second base. With J.P. Aaron Sebia back in there as the catcher. He's got three of the four games. Travis Snyder's in left field, batting seventh, with Edwin Encarnacion off the bereavement list and into the lineup as the DH today. And Jason Nix at the third base bats ninth. It is Daisuke Matsuzaka on the mound for the Red Sox today. He's not pitched since April the 11th and in two starts, an 0 2 record. Losses against Cleveland and Tampa Bay in his first two outings of the year at 12.86. Earned run average and opponents hitting at 4.12 against him. And his numbers against Toronto very good. 6 and 1 with a 3.80 ERA and 71 innings. And opponents hitting at just 2.24 against him for the Blue Jays. The Red Sox defense is brought to you by Jordan's Furniture. They're currently first in the American League with six errors in 14 games. Kevin Euglis at third base, Jed Lowry the shortstop, Dustin Pedroia at second, and Adrian Gonzalez the first baseman left to right. Kyle Crawford, Jacoby Ellsbury, and J.D. Drew, and Jason Veritek doing the catching for Dice K. Matsuzaka. Up hiring crew in behind the plate. The crew chief, Dana Demuth, calling the balls and strikes. Kerwin Danley at first base. Paul Nauert at second base. And Doug Eddings is the umpire at third. We're available to tell us ca- this telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your television remote. Enjoy the game. Buenos dias, amigos. And El Escobar stands in on the right side to get it started. As Dice came out, Suzak into the wind. The first pitch of this one is swinging a foul tip for strike one. You can see how aggressive the Jays are today with Dice K and their approach. Of course, uh, John Farrell, very well versed there, manager. In regards to Dice K Matsuzaka and all the Red Sox pitchers for that matter. How much did they could do with Lester or Beckett, though, the last couple of days, and the Red Sox able to. To take two of the first three games of this series and the return of John Farrell to Fenway Park. The Jays with losses each of the last two days fall under 500. They're now seven and eight, and two and a half games back of the Yankees, who are top the American League East. Red Sox are four and ten heading into today's game after back-to-back wins, five games back of the Yankees. New York beating Texas last night, six to five in Sunday night baseball. They top the American League East, but Red Sox playing good baseball last couple days. Two one. This is inside three and one. After a couple of breaking balls, Dice came back with a fastball just missing the inside corner. It was supposed to be away. You see Veritek set up away, but the fastball stays inside. Escobar fouls it off to the right. Full count. Escobar now. Corey Patterson waits on deck next. Escobar 0 for 4 in the game yesterday with a couple of strikeouts, and he is 0 for his last nine. Still hitting at 3.41 on the year. Off to a fast start for the Jays. Falls off another to the right, not a play. And the difference for Dice K, five days rest or more. Again, that's what he would get normally when pitching in Japan. A 3.96 earned run average. For Dice K Matsuzaka. He's got the rest. We'll see how he does today against the Jays. This one fouled off. Looks like right now he's got pretty good life on that fastball and he's been able to keep it out of the middle of the plate. Three two pitch to Escobar. In the air to right field J.D. Drew has it sized up as he moves over and makes the catch. So 
One down in the first and it brings up Corey Patterson. 308 start to his season home run and six runs batted in. Patterson one for three in the game yesterday with a double and a walk also at a stolen base. Strike one over the inside corner. The Blue Jays today conclude an 11 day 10 game road trip. In the finale of this four game series against the Red Sox. Three and six on the current trip. This is to right a longer run for Drew but he's still there and he makes the catch two down. I believe the Jays go home for five games and go back on another 10 game trip. So a lot of road time early in the season for John Farrell and his group. Yeah, when they get home, the Yankees will be waiting for them for two, an off day, three with Tampa Bay, and then it's back out to Texas and New York, as well as Tampa Bay. So this is not an easy stretch to begin the year. And there for strike one to Jose Bautista. 11 start, three home runs, six runs batted in. Swing and a miss, late on the cut, 93 on the fastball, and it's 0 and 2. And again, the first two fastballs from Dice K keeping the ball away from Batista, that one at 93. Two pitch from Matsuzaka in the dirt. And it's one and two. And things have been a little better for Kurt Young and the pitching staff over the last couple of days. And looking for more of the same today for Matsuzaka. One two is on the ground up the middle and by the dive of Pedroia into center field. Sharply hit by Batista and the Blue Jays have a two out base runner here in the first inning. Now Batista came in the game only one for 13 against Matt Sazaka, but he gets an outside fastball and takes it by the dive of Dustin Pedroia again that ball not middle of plate that ball on the outside part of the plate that's just good hitting by Batista. Two down, Batista at first base, and here is Adam Lind. Lind has just two hits in his last 23 at bats. One of those hits came yesterday, one for three in the ball game yesterday. Overall, 241 with a home run and nine runs batted in. Snap throw to first and Batista's back on the bag safely. A lot of times catches will throw behind that left handed hit at Jason Veritek this time throwing over the top of the lefty and Batista not that far off the bag gets back easily. Well, Red Sox trying to control this. Base running Toronto Blue Jays team, they have been highly aggressive in this series. It does not matter whether they were down in the game or ahead, they have been running all over the place. And Jason Veritek company trying to keep them in check today. It's up high ball two, two and oh. Blue Jays currently ranked seventh in the American League in batting average, hitting at 256 as a team, sixth in runs scored. And look at what has been a tough stretch for Lind in particular against Dice K. Matsuzaka. Two 0 pitch. And a swing and a miss. Well, Dice K has been good against Toronto, six and one in his career with a 3.80. He was 2 0 last season. 
This time with a cut fastball up and in to Adam Lynn. Two down in the first inning. Jose Batista at first base. 2 1 is strike two over the inside corner. SK battles back and evens the count. Once again, that ball was supposed to be away, but it ends up coming inside. See Veritech set up away back to the inside corner, but good enough for the strike and no swing by Lynn. On deck, Jay's batting in the first with two down, and Jose Batista at first base. There goes Batista. Here's a ground ball to first. It's gobbled up by Gonzalez. Tags the bag, ends the inning. Blue Jays do not score in the first. Red Sox are coming up. Blue Jays do not score in the top of the first inning. Red Sox coming up here and they deal with Ricky Romero. Romero's fourth appearance of the year, one and one with a 1.66 ERA. He's worked in 21 and two thirds innings. It's 20 strikeouts in those 21 and two thirds innings. Eight inning effort against Seattle and a loss. First loss, but. Fourth career complete game on April the 12th against Seattle. And one of his opening day appearance for the Toronto Blue Jays. As JD Drew in the leadoff spot, sends one to deep center field. Corey Patterson back at the wall. It's high off the wall. McCarron and Ricochet gets by him as Drew heads on to third base with a triple to get the bottom of the first inning started. That nearly got out of here in center field, but a triple as it stands. Well, one of the reasons J.D. Drew in that leadoff spot today, a 450 batting average against Romero with one home run. Almost make it two on this blast of center field. Straight away center field, right at the top of the wall for the leadoff triple. Romero's had his problems with the Red Sox, two and four with an ERA north of seven.
Well, Drew 90 feet away as Petroya takes a pitch inside. Petroya 315, two homers and six runs batted in. By him one and one, 93. Giddy up on it. Joy yesterday, 0 for 4 in the game, and is now 2 for 13 in the series against Toronto. But still a very good homestand. Joy overall at 375 in the last eight games. Inside out swing and foul, 1 and 2. Check out the Red Sox starting lineup. It's brought to you by New England Chevy dealers. J.D. Drew in right field. Dustin Pedroia at second base. Adrian Gonzalez at first base. Kevin Euclid at third. David Ortiz at D.H. Jed Lowry at shortstop at sixth. Carl Crawford is in left field with Jason Veritek doing the catching. And Jacoby Ellsbury in center field. That's ninth. Down and in. Pedroia goes down but eludes the pitch. That's a heck of a play, too, by Aaron Sebia, the catcher for the uh, Toronto Blue Jays. It's this sweeping breaking ball just go, keeps going toward Pedroia, just misses Pedroia. But Aaron Sebia are able to knock it down, actually catch it, and save a run. J.D. Drew started this bottom of the first inning with a triple off the center field fence. Pedroia takes ball three in the dirt. Adrian Gonzalez waiting on deck as the Red Sox bat here in the first inning. Ball four, he walks in. Let's take a look at the Blue Jay defense. They're 13th in the league, 15 errors in 15 games. Jason Nix at third base, you know, Escobar the shortstop. Aaron Hill at second, Adam Lynn the first baseman. Left to right, Travis Snyder, Corey Patterson, and Jose Batista. J.P. Aaron Sebia doing the catching for Romero. J.D. Drew at third base, Dustin Bedroy at first base. Nobody out for Adrian Gonzalez. 69 start to his Red Sox career. Home run, eight runs batted in. Adrian Gonzalez into the first inning, making a nice play on a hard hit ground ball. Takes it himself at first base and gets Dice K out of the inning. Gonzalez grounds it to first. It's a foul ball. Made by the home plate umpire Dana DeMuth. We'll do it again here now. The count of one and one. Four for 13 with five RBIs. 1 1. It is fouled off. 1 and 2. 92 that time of the fastball from Ricky Romero. What a gorgeous day here in Boston, both for the baseball game and the marathon. Cool conditions, good for the runners, the wind at their back. It's beautiful here at Fenway Park. 55 degrees to be exact, 17 miles per hour with the breeze blowing out to center field. And expect some clouds to move in at some point right now. Nothing but blue skies above Fenway Park. Uh, game of the series, final game of the homestand. There is a one two pitch to Adrian Gonzalez. Inside for ball two, two and two. And the six, but missing that time for Romero. Kevin Euclid waits on deck, still nobody out here in the bottom of the first inning. Gonzalez down on strikes. Romero needed that. It's his first strike out of the game. Looked like a slider this time from Romero. Something off speed. Ball down out of the zone, but Gonzalez chases it. 
It's up to Kevin Euclid to try to drive in that run. One out, first and third, and Kevin Euclid sitting under 200 at 190 coming in. And on base percentage of 424 so far in the season. A lot of walks for Euclid. One home run, five runs batted in. Ball one away. Walked 10 times in his last eight games and 15 total walks on the year. Tied for first in the majors. And good numbers against Ricky Romero, including two home runs. And the seven of 13 times against Ricky Romero. And behind again, 2 0. Oh. With the center fielder Corey Patterson a step or two towards right center field. Snap throw to first and Pedroia diving back safely. Dustin with one steal on the season has not been caught. Chops it foul and it's two and one. That's so having to deal with another lefty, three out of four in this series. And again, more of the same when they leave Fenway Park today. They head to Oakland to get ready for a two game series against the Athletics. And you'll see lefty Brett Anderson in game one and lefty Gio Gonzalez in the second game. Nicholas reaches out and lifts a five ball foul back into the seats down the right field line. Run of left handed starters against the Red Sox and a bunch of different lineups as a result for Boston. If they've got them, they're going to throw them against the Red Sox too all season long. Ricky Romero going today, 14 game winner last year, 14 and 9 and 32 starts. As he comes back to strike out Euclid. Strikes out Gonzalez, then Euclid with runners at first and third, two down. Yeah, both strikeouts coming on off speed pitches to change up this time from Romero to pick up the strikeout down and away from Euclid. Here comes David Ortiz, one of our key matchup brought to you by New England Honda dealers. It's Ricky Romero, 409 average. This is not a lefty that David's had trouble with. One on the year, two homers, eight runs batted in. Adding two outs, JD Drew at third base, Dustin Pedroia at first base. Ortiz with a big swing, fouling it back to the screen. The Jays wrapping up Ricky Romero last year after his 14 and 9 season. Second time he'd been in double figures and victories. Won 13 games in 09. He's still just 26 years old, but signed a five year contract extension with the Blue Jays. The long term plan. Uh, trying to get out of a jam here. Red Sox had runners first and third, nobody out, but now there's two down. One one to Big Poppy. Speed, it's two and one. And from Los Angeles, California. Position and falling behind Ortiz here, three and one. Swing and a miss, and a big one at that, full count. 
Ortiz all set for that fastball three and one. He gets the fastball, but it's a fastball on the outside part of the plate. Good pitch by Romero. Two outs, first and third, and a 3 2 pitch. Ortiz will take all four. Second walk of the inning, a line by Romero. Loads him up for Jed Lowry. Jed Lowry turning 27 years old yesterday. He's 5 for 10 in the series with a home run and four runs batted in. And an average at 462 at the moment in the home run and five RBIs. So a six game hitting streak coming into today's action. This will be the 25th pitch of the inning for Ricky Romero to start his day. And Lowry shoots it to right. It'll fall in for a base hit. Two from third scores. Here comes Pedroia. Throw to the plate is not in time. Throw to third. He's not in time either. Red Sox lead it two to nothing. Jed Lowry comes through. That'll make that a seven game hitting streak now for Jed Lowry. Big two out base hit. Gets the fastball inside for Romero. The hands inside the baseball and slices it to right field for the base hit. Good strong throw here by Bautista, but not in time. Red Sox have the two run lead. Red Sox have had their share of two out hits over the last couple of games. Tenth run scored in the first three innings in the last couple of games, too. They've been doing a lot of work early in games, getting leads. Another one here today on top 2 nothing as Jed Lowry comes up with a big hit with two outs. And now a chance for Carl Crawford. Who for the second time this season has been dropped down to the number seven spot. He had been in the first series of the year against the Texas Rangers. And back down there again after a couple of days in the leadoff spot as Crawford takes strike one. The last three games that he's played in, he is 0 for his last 12. And 3 for 32 on the homestand. So Ortiz at third, Lowry at first. One and one. in there for strike two. Good curveball there by Romero. Starts it right at the hip of Kyle Crawford and breaks it out over the plate. Another in the dirt and it is now two and two. This will already be the 30th pitch of Ricky Romero's outing. He's not yet out of the first inning. 15 balls, 14 strikes at the moment. And he's walked two in the inning. Here's to first and Lowry back on the bag. Stay alive. Crawford sprays it foul off to the left and out of play. Has been working. Dice Gay has been waiting. Is Matsuzaka with an 18 minute wait at the moment while the Red Sox have gathered two runs here in the bottom of the first inning. 
looking for more. Crawford will pop it up. Shallow left. In comes Snyder. And he'll make the catch. It ends the inning. The Red Sox get a pair and lead it 2 nothing after one. Montreal at the Bell Center. Coverage begins with Catherine Tabin and George Kluzak with a one hour edition of World's Face Off Live at 6 30. For more info on our marathon, visit Nesson.com. Jerry, uh, our sources tell us that Zidane Chara participating in the morning skate. Uh, let's hope he's okay for tonight. Clear some of those bodies away from in front of the net. Aaron Hill leading it off and taking ball one. There at CBA Snyder in the second inning for the Jays. Red Sox getting two runs in the first inning. High fly ball to left down the line. Crawford over has room and makes the catch. A busy day on Nesson today. It's extra innings live. Red Sox final coming your way after the game. The history of the Boston Bruins. Bruins face off live. And then Bruins and Canadiens game three for the Bell Center. Bruins overtime live will follow that. And then put a ball on your day with Nesson Daily. 10 30. Wrap it all up. By that time, we should be maybe just landing in San Francisco. Putting a bow on our day. Three hour work day. Three point five taking and Sebia three oh eight two homers and six runs batted in. And three of the four games. So Jose Molina on Saturday, the day game after the night game. It's been there in Sebia back to back days now. And he swings and misses one and two. Snyder waiting on deck. Jays batting in the second inning. This came out Suzaka in the first inning. Gave up a two out base hit to Jose Bautista. Only Blue Jay to reach so far in the game. Two and two. The 
This case six and one with a 3.80 ERA in his career against the Blue Jays. He's two and zero in his last four starts against Toronto. Hopped up into shallow right center. That is Pedroia in his Ellsbury, and it's Jacoby Ellsbury who makes the catch two down. Red Sox baseball on Nesson is brought to you in part by Eastern Bank, the official bank of the Red Sox television network. Commitment, compassion, and love of the game. Find out what we're made of at easternbank.com. So two down here in the second inning. Travis Snyder coming up. Some of those flags blowing here out to straightaway center field today. Was up top, 0 and 1. 157 to start the year with a home run and 10 runs batted in. Leaves it that, it's 0 and 2. The change up there by Dice K, the second one he's thrown in the game today. This one gets a swing and a miss. Screwball would look like back in the day. A little bit, yeah. Not doesn't move quite as much as uh, the screwball did, but this has that same kind of rotation on it. Yeah, yeah. Outside, two and two. The coaching from Jason Burns on that uh, last delivery point to his shoulder. A reminder from time to time, an extension of the coaching staff, no doubt. Still two and two. A couple of pitches ago, Veritek after that out and making sure, hey, let's keep that shoulder in, keep that right shoulder in. All the mechanics together. And it flies, the ball goes up and away. Count with two down in the inning to Travis Snyder. It's been a tough trip for him. Comes to an end today. Trying to finish it on a good note. Back with the Blue Jays waiting on deck today, used as the DH. And then on the bereavement list. 3 2 again. And there's ball four. SK loses Travis Snyder. First walk allowed by Matsuzaka. And here comes Edwin and Carnacion. And Snyder becomes a threat at first base. He's got five steals and caught one time. And Canacion coming off the bereavement list has not played in the first three games of this series. The option infielder outfielder Mike McCoy back to Las Vegas as part of the move. Ball one up top. Canacion was hot. He had a four game hitting streak, seven for 15. He's gone 10 for 30 against righties. Fouls it off and back, one and one. Walk for Travis Snyder is at first base, gained a good size lead. There's 
Ball two. about to throw his 40th pitch to an inning and two thirds. Snyder with a good size lead again at first base. Daisuke readies for the 2 2. And it's fouled off to the right again. Encarnacion peppering the press box level up here so far. He will go with his teammates after the game and make the trip across country. He will be starting game one of the series tomorrow night against the Oakland A's. Matched up against Brett Anderson. And the place that he is comfortable in. Seventeen and five against Oakland in his career. It seemed to make sense to the coaching staff. And of course, uh, his start was scheduled here as part of the homestand was rained out. Well, seventeen and five against Oakland. Plus, Dice has good numbers against Toronto. Two 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 in Carnacion. Snyder not running and Carnacion sends it out to left field where Carl Crawford moves over and then back to make the catch. Getting it a half down, it's 2 nothing Boston. Bottom of the second inning on this marathon day. Jason Veritek out of the eight spot. Jacoby Ellsbury and J.D. Drew featured here in the bottom of the second inning. Fifth start of the season. The second appearance of the series. And one for 13. No homers, no runs batted in for the captain. Once a 1-0. High in the air out to right center. 
And Corey Patterson backpedal is almost to the track to make the catch for the first out of the second inning. The Sox fans want to remind you to get three great Red Sox games in one exciting package with the MasterCard Triple Play Packs. Seats are available in various locations throughout the ballpark. All packages will include one game of the Chicago Cubs. And make their long way to return to Fenway Park. Visit RedSox.com slash Triple Play to get your Cubs tickets today. Out in the second and here is Jacoby Ellsbury. Getting under 200 at 196. He's got three home runs. And of course, one of them coming here yesterday, a big one, a three run shot. And open things up. It was tied one to one when Jacoby took it deep down the right field line of the corner. Third home run of the season for him. Now, a broken bat soft liner. Escobar goes to the outfield to reel it in. Look back at yesterday's home run by Ellsbury. Gets a fastball that he can ex extend on. And move back in the right field bleachers. Jesse Litch, who pitched pretty well at times yesterday, had a couple of bad innings, ended up on the losing side. There's a pitch inside to J.D. Drew. Litch's line from yesterday seven hits, six runs, a walk, and five Ks. Dealt the loss. And he falls to one and twos. Pitch in there for strike to JD Drew. And Drew with a triple to get it started in the first inning. He came around to score the Red Sox first run of the day. Leadoff triple for the Red Sox. Belongs to JD Drew back in 2009. June 29th, to be precise, against the Baltimore Orioles. He's done it again today. Leadoff spot for the Red Sox in the bottom of the first inning. A couple of years later. And now he'll take the walk. It is the third free pass served up by Ricky Romero. That's interesting. Sometimes lefty against lefty, you just see the ball good, and apparently JD Drew does against Romero. He's got those very good lifetime numbers. The triple, now the base on ball here in the second inning. Certain guys you pick up well, and other guys you don't. Pedroia walked in the first inning, came around to score the second Red Sox run. I know late in your career you kind of opened your stance against left. Is that to get a better look? It was to get a little better look and to try to stay off the outside stuff early in the count. I was amazed at how many pitches I got on the from the middle in early in the count. He used to tell me all the time, take him the other way, take him the other way. I couldn't take him the other way. <laughs> so I tried something different. I started to cheat a little bit, open up. Drew one and one the count. Let's see if he's done a nice job today blocking a lot of these pitches from Ricky Romero in the dirt. JD Drew held on at first by Adam Lynn. Two outs here in the second inning. Droya sends it down the right field line, but it'll be foul. Thinking about that hockey game tonight, I, I think I think the Bruins jump out early with a goal and then rough them up a little bit. You know, play rough them up. They don't like to be roughed up. Right. No, uh, yeah, I was expecting a much more physical series than we've seen the first two games. And the Bruins are not playing their game for some reason. It's not happening. That's going to be tonight. It's going to be an early goal and then rough them up. That's what you call them. Early goal and then rough them up. I was the uh, skipper there, whatever they call it, the Claude, color coach. Claude Julian. That's what I was said. That would be my pregame. Rough them up. The problem is they scored one goal in the first two games. Your theory is they can do better than that. They got to do better than that. They can do better. 
and they're on home ice. That doesn't matter to me. It's still ice. On the ground and through in the right side, a base hit for Pedroia. Drew will stop at second base. And then the Red Sox have something going with two down in the inning. Yeah, a couple of quick outs, then the walk to uh, J.D. Drew. Dustin Pedroia takes the change up to the opposite field. He's had a few hits in this direction on this homestand, going the other way. Reaching out, down, low pitch away from him and just shoots the right field for the base hit. Celtics last night came out Ooh. sluggish in the first half, but uh, Ray Ray, big rush, and then Ray Ray at the end. Our guy Ray Ray, Pierce passed it up over to Ray Ray and a three. This is a great time in the city, isn't it, for it sports? Is. Adrian Gonzalez rolls it over foul outside of first. Just a split, I'm going to miss the Bruins game tonight. We're not going to miss it. Jim White's going to have it on his computer. I'm going to pay ten dollars <laughs> as this of his really? expense report, so we can all watch it. <laughs> I don't think Jim knows this. No, he does. Although that may change things yeah. now that it's your money. The one is fouled off, and it's zero and two. I'll give him ten bucks so we can put it in expenses, and then I'll tip him ten bucks so we can the rest of us can watch. I'll give him twenty bucks for the game. How about we just take Jim's computer? You don't want Jim in with us? <laughs> There's not a lot of room. But his talent and everybody else, what is that? It's kind of league you play. <laughs> Strike three call. Gonzalez is gone. And so are the Red Sox. They strand a pair. 2 0 Boston at the end of two. Donuts iced coffee at participating locations. Go to dunkin'donuts.com slash hot cold to learn more. There's no purchase necessary, and it's open to legal residents of Massachusetts or New Hampshire, 18 or older. For a full set of official rules, visit dunkin'donuts.com. 2 0 Red Sox on top of the Blue Jays. We head to the top half of the third inning, and the number nine man for the Blue Jays, Jason, next to lead it off. Escobar and Patterson to face Dice K. Matsuzaka. One bid and it's fouled back. Jason Nix trying to catch uh, Euclid deep at third base. Euclid well by behind the bag has not moved in after that bunt attempt. 
Still playing very deep. Home runs, four runs batted in, and a 278 average from the number nine spot for the Blue Jays. He's played in every game down there at third base. Came over from the Cleveland Indians at the end of spring training. Waiting on a 1 1. Inside ball two. For seven in the series against Boston for Knicks. Had one base runner in each of the first two innings. Single for Jose Batista in the first inning. Did not advance. Travis Snyder walked with two outs in the second inning and did not advance. This case threw 45 pitches, working to the first batter of the third inning. Pop up. And in the infield down from third comes Euclidus. And put it away for out number one. Your radio home for the Boston Red Sox is also the home for Boston's number one morning show, Dennis and Callahan. Tune in tomorrow morning at 6 to hear the best sports talk in America with John Dennis and Jerry Callahan. That's weekday mornings at 6 on the WEEI Sports Radio Network and, of course, right here on Nesson. Does came out Suzaka has six fly ball outs so far. One ground ball out, one out in the third inning. Here's Yanel Escobar sends one foul. Seven out of ten first pitch strikes for Daisuke. Another fly ball. Shallow center. Out is Pedroia. In is Ellsbury. Two down. Red Sox Nation, if you need medical care at Fenway Park, visit the Beth Israel Deaconess First Aid Stand behind Section 12. Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center is the official hospital of the Boston Red Sox. Visit them at BIDMC.org. Two down here in the third inning. Corey Patterson. Wide out to right field, first time up. It's a little strike one from Matsuzaka, who's ahead again. Fiftieth pitch of the day for Matsuzaka. And it's a foul ball above us, out of play. This could be the day, Don. We've had quite a few foul balls up in this direction. I'm feeling it. This could be the day we get one. Been a while. Maybe He's Megan will get one. In a couple of years, I think. Luke Scott hit one up here. In 09 was the last time, I think. Really? Yeah. I had my yellow jacket on. <laughs> Today working in a tandem with Jason Veritek. Ready with a one two pitch to Corey Patterson. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Fastball up, first pitch for, for Nice K. Two and a half done, two nothing Red Sox.
plays last half of the third inning back at Fenway and it's Kevin Euclid's. Ends it off of the Red Sox and takes ball one. Euclid struck out swinging in the first inning. One of three strikeouts for Ricky Romero. His first two innings of work. Will be up to 51 pitches. Popped up down the first baseline. Lynn heads over towards the seats, but will not have a play. Mind you to follow the Red Sox with MLB.com at bat 11 for your iPhone, iPad, Android, or Blackberry. And live audio pitch by pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit RedSox.com for details. There's a 1 1 to Euclid's. Then Ortiz and Lowry, four, five, and six. Just got hit and hit yesterday. And again, that's why Euclid wears that pad and that elbow. With a lot of pitches inside and a lot of pitches uh, that elbow hanging out over the plate. Center field back goes Corey Patterson towards the bullpen. He will not get it. It is off the wall as Euclid pulls up at second base with a double to start the third inning. Looked like it hit right off the top of that wall out there in the front of the Red Sox bullpen. Looked like it had enough steam to get out of the ballpark, but right off the top of the wall and back into the field of play. That's about as close as you can get to having a home run and not getting one. But the leadoff double by Euclid here in the third inning. Safe at second. Safe and secure. New York life. Ortiz bats with Euclid at second base. Nobody out. And he takes strike one. Going for strike two, and it's quickly 0 and 2. Coming in with a record of one and one, 51.66 earned run average. It gives up two first inning runs. It's out of a two out, two on jam in the second inning. And a leadoff double for Euclid to begin things here in the third. Outside, one and two. Tease now, Lowry next. It's already chipped in today with a two run single in the first inning. This one will get away from Aaron CB, but Euclid didn't get a real good read and remains at second base. Now, if you don't get the jump right away and you can't find the baseball, there's no point in going. There's the breaking ball right there that gets by Aaron CB, but I think it was blocked a little bit by Aaron CB. It didn't know how far the ball was going. Again, a look at the curveball here to Big Poppy that just clanks off the glove of Aaron Sebia. He's kind of in front of it as he chases it down, and Euclid can't tell how far away it's gone. On the ground foul outside of first. Lemonade's going fast here today.
Pitch 60 for Ricky Romero is a 2 2. Chopped right side, shift on and throw into right field. Ruckel's being waved around, no throw. Red Sox lead it 3 0. Most of the time, the Blue Jays play that shift where they have the second baseman deep in the outfield, but for some reason this time they do not. And the ground ball, top spin ground ball, gets by Aaron Hill at second base. Big Poppy picks up his ninth RBI of the season. Red Sox up three zip. David's been aboard twice, walking now an RBI single. And here's Jed Lowry. Off to the right now to play. Came in with a six gamer. He's got a seven gamer now and hit it 619 along the way. He's seven runs driven in. Get him out of the lineup right now. Two on, nobody out. Paul Crawford fly to left first time up. Once at the 0 1 and is down 0 2. A jab at it that time and instead of squaring around, getting the knees bent. Getting the bat out in front, the Crawford just kind of really jabs at this ball. You see where the bat is, it's back behind him instead of out in front. This is a foul down the left field line. So I guess when bunting, you don't want the ball to travel deep. No, you want to get it out in front of the plate. Bend those knees square around and get the barrel of the bat and out in front of home plate. Swing and a pop up for Crawford. Back at second base. It is Aaron Hill who makes the catch a stride on the outfield grass. The first out. There's one out here in the third inning. Here comes Jason Veritek. Sky went out to center field in the second. David Ortiz at second base, Jed Lowry at first base. Tried to hold up. Goes around for strike one. Didn't even check. It was Leonard Demuth, the crew chief, who made that call. It's going to miss. Very good change up by Romero there. That one moving down and away from Jason Veritek. So a breaking ball followed up by a change up. Couple of off speed pitches. To start off Veritek. Now let's see if they elevate in the strike zone. Veritek chops one towards shortstop. Escobar to second for one. And Veritek will reach at first base to get the middleman in Jed Lowry as Ortiz takes third. So 
Well, first and third, two down in the inning. Here comes Jacoby Ellsberg. Lined out shortstop in the second inning. Seventieth pitch of the day for Ricky Romero. And it's in there for strike one. Asbury lined out to the shortstop Escobar in the second inning. That's with Ortiz at third. Veritek crossed the diamond at first. Just missing one and one. Deep into that pitch count as he works here in the third inning. Two and two. Once again, the changeup from Romero, this time to the left hand, a hit of Ellsbury. Jacoby with the big swing, but no contact. Tried to hold up and did. Thought about going around, but it's a full count now. Drew waiting on deck. Red Sox still batting in the third inning with two outs. Late swing and a foul into the Blue Jays' dugout. Sox right now out hitting the Blue Jays six to one and on top three to nothing. They've added another run in this inning. Asbury grounds it foul. We'll do it again. Seeing a variety of off speed pitches, curve balls, change ups. Popped up back a third and short left. Escobar out, Snyder in, and Snyder takes charge and makes the catch at the inning. Red Sox had a run, take a 3 0 lead at the end of three.
Liverpool, the world's most historic soccer club. Follow the club's latest news at Messon.com slash Liverpool. We head along to the fourth inning. It's 3-0. Red Sox on top. Our pleasure to have with us Senator Scott Brown in the house. How are you? Hey, great. Good to be on. Thank you. Nice to see you. Good to be seen. You guys actually get paid for this. It's amazing. It's incredible. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. I know. I know. Well, a very special day here in Boston. Uh, as always, the marathon going on, the Patriots Day here, and, of course, uh, the early game at Fenway Park. Just a special time to be around. Please, what uh, the city of Boston does, uh, the public safety people, to actually pull it off yeah. and get people here safely and ha have a good time and get home safely. It's great. How are you enjoying the new gig? It's a lot of work, but I'm doing my best and uh, doing what I said I'd be, uh, do, be an independent voter and thinker and uh, look out uh, for the people of Massachusetts. I know you're going to be a part of something that's been very special here at Fenway Park over the last couple of years. That's the Run to Home Base program. Tell us a little bit about it and your involvement. Well, I, I got asked by a couple of the guys from uh, one of the radio stations to come down and, and, and race in, and I'm a triathlete, so I do a lot of running. But obviously the Red Sox and what they're doing with their partners to make a difference with people who have uh, traumatic brain injuries is unbelievable. You can go to runtohomebase.org, sign up. Uh, they need about 800 more runners. Because uh, the shooting for 3,000, I think they're going to try to raise, you know, two and a half, three million dollars, and that's all going to go to helping not only the soldiers but their families, uh, because you know the families need to be treated too, because there's a really a, a, a problem when they come home and then just you don't know who you who you're getting, and it helps the families as well. This is hard hit to third base, gobbled up by Euclid. Charles Batista. Euclid's great, man. I tell you. He has a great program too. I've, I've, I've been supportive of his program, and he really does an amazing job. What a, he's like a, you know, hard, hard, hard worker. He's one of the guys, you know. Yeah, pretty nice play there as he goes down to one knee. That ball was scorched by Batista, but uh, up easy with it as Euclid and makes a throw to first base to get the out. You mentioned you run the, you know, done triathlons quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, you able to train the same as a yeah, senator not, as you? Well, as not you as much. Before? I did a duathlon and rent them uh, yesterday. A little sore today, but uh, you know, I get up early. I'm up at five, five thirty in the gym for a couple hours, and then, you know, I don't really eat a lot uh, at night. So maybe I'll go for a run after work. But uh, you know, obviously my job is to is to do the people's business, and uh, that takes a priority. But we have a, a couple of guys, Senator Thune and I, and we'll go out and let a little steam off, and then we'll get back to work. That's a reversal with Jerry and I do. We eat a lot at night. <laughs> well, I, I mean, the only reason I do it is so I can't eat. You know, otherwise, I'd, uh, I'd have some trouble. We're back to the run to home base program, which is coming up. And again, it is on May the 22nd. Registration is required. So not just anybody can show up. But yeah. we're still looking for some more people out there. Well, the thing that, that's so good about it is you get, actually get to finish at home plate. Then obviously the festivities. I know a lot of the guys are coming down. You know, Red Sox and a lot of the supporters. A lot of the troops. It's really just one of those feel-good things where you can actually make a difference and have a good workout to boot. There's a pop-up into shallow left. Crawford circles and the wind yeah, plays with it. He's all over the place out there. Huh? <laughs> he comes down with it. Crowd number two. A couple of pop-ups today with that wind blowing out toward the bullpen have been uh, a little bit difficult for outfielders and infielders. There you see on the, the on our set right now the run to home base Sunday May 22nd. 9K run ending right here at Fenway Park. Limited space available. Yeah, this 5.6 miles, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But obviously that uh, goes to people who are obviously been in many deployments of coming home and, and just aren't quite right. A lot of traumatic stress uh, disorder problems and uh, commend the Red Sox and their partners for really making a difference. 5.6 miles. It's a 9K. So we're moving veterans returning from Iraq and Afghanistan with traumatic Brain injury, combat stress. Now, the biggest part of the problem actually being down there is I don't get to listen to you guys. You know, are you able to? Are we able to pick you up somehow back down in D.C.? Yeah, get the baseball package. Yeah, yeah. MLB package. I don't have much time to watch, but uh, you know, when you're when you're away, one of the things you, you think about is the Red Sox, Patriots, Bruins, Sox. You know, you really you have people don't realize when you, when you're in a, a state. Where they have no chance of ever winning anything, <laughs> the amount of jealousy amongst the senators and the, and the congressmen. Oh my gosh, you're from Boston. Oh my God, the Red Sox, the Celtics, the Bruins. Everyone's always in the playoffs, always in the hunt. And you know, when you're down in Washington or Baltimore, they don't. They're not quite there. I was going to say, are you into the Nationals at all? Yeah, yeah. We, I, I have actually. I just want to. I just like to go and relax with the family when they're out and about. Uh, they come in. We try to do things with the practice too, just to get that camaraderie going, but. 
I want to thank you for the honor of coming up here and meeting right. you and, and seeing you. Thank you, you Senator. Both. Thank you. Very much thank appreciate you. it. See you and, around uh, the whole base. And, and you take care of your health, okay? I'll try to. I will. Thank you. Okay. Last half of the fourth inning, Red Sox have a 3 nothing advantage, out hitting the Blue Jays 6 to 1. JD Drew leading it off in the last half of the fourth inning. He cut it off in the first inning with a triple. Now he sends one up the middle, softly hit Hill against the grain off balance, and the throw pulls the first baseman off the bag. JD Drew is aboard for the third time today. That's a tough throw as a second baseman to control because your momentum is taking you away from first base. You have to kind of throw it behind the first baseman. And this ball just tails up the line and JD picks up the base hit. Just pulling that foot of Adam Lynn off the first base bag. And Drew is on again, third time today. Triple a walk and now the infield hit. And here's Dustin Pedroia who has walked and single today. Outfield playing for him to go the other way. Center fielder Corey Patterson a step towards right center. Dirt and Aaron CB again having to block it, knock it down as he does again. Who's playing? He backs up a few steps, ended up playing it perfectly. And there's out number one of the fourth inning. I'll remind you that tonight, immediately following our Bruins coverage, join Jay McCarthy for Ness and Daly, presented by Sun Life Financial. The highlights and reaction from Bruins Game 3 matchup with the Canadiens up in Montreal, plus a preview of Game 2 between the Celtics and Knicks as the Celtics look to take a 2 0 series lead. All this and much, much more on Ness and Daly tonight, following Bruins coverage only on Nesson. One out in the fourth inning. JD Drew at first base, and here's Adrian Gonzalez. Adrian does very well against lefties, having a tough time today with this particular lefty. This time he faced Ricky Romero, and Romero struck him out in the first, then struck him out in the second.
Their old starter up to 84 pitches with one out here in the fourth inning. Strike one and two. Nicholas waiting on deck. One out, one on here in the last of the fourth inning. Yes, and Adrian Gonzalez strikes out for the third time today. First time he got him on a change up the last two times fastballs. Fastball at 92 by Gonzalez. <laughs> two down runner at first base Kevin Euclid struck out in the first inning doubled and scored in the third inning. Strike one. This will daily be run after the Bruins coverage tonight from Montreal. Side and it's one and one to Euclid. Of Los Angeles, California, went to Cal State Fullerton. One foul, and it's one and two. Said it's ball two, two, and two. Yeah, all you're gonna do is watch reaction from Romero. He thought he had strike three on Kevin Euclid. And he has legitimate beef. In the air to right. Over is Bautista underneath it. And he'll put it away to retire the side. Play four innings, three nothing. Red Sox on top. and Jim get the breakdown of Daisuke Matsuzaka's performance in this series finale including the manager's perspective from the press room. As the guys will answer your questions so keep those tweets coming. It's all coming up right after the game on WB Mason's Extra Innings Live. You know I've got a complaint. Okay. Every time we have a guest in the booth or some form of celebrity or whatever it is mm -hmm. it seems like you always have your camera ready for a pitcher after. 
And the pitcher generally starts with the three of us in it. Right. By the time the finished product comes out, you, you can... eliminate me. Yes. Well, yeah, the senator brought me in. Right. I had no intentions of getting in the pitcher. He right. brought me in. And you have already eliminated me from that pitcher. You have already been chopped up. Yes, exactly. It's an unfortunate development, but it had to happen. Because there's plenty of pictures of you all over my wall already. I mean, if I were to take a picture with everybody. There's no boot. pictures of me on your wall because you true. cut them all out. That's Every single true. one is cut out. No, Steven Tyler, you're still in there. That's because I had to be because there was somebody else in the booth. Right. And there's a great shot of your shoulder in the Kevin Costner photo. <laughs> Which was unfortunate because there's just no way to get it out. It doesn't take you long to get it out, too. You already had it out to get it in it. Yes, Megan and I have photoshopped it already. We've worked on it. We've set it. And you've been eliminated. <laughs> yeah. The 1 1. It's held off back below us. We'll say it easy. To, it is very easy to Photoshop you. I don't know why that is. I know you I, I, be the right height, or I, I don't know what it is. I, I go out nice and clean. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Aaron Sevilla strikes out. Second K. Dice came on Suzaka, and he's one away in the fifth. First strike out was with a fastball. This time it's the slider to Aaron Sevilla, and what a better, much better routing this has been for Dice K this afternoon. Down here in the fifth inning, and Travis Snyder, the battery, walked in the second inning. For ball two, two and zero. Oh. People must come into your place and go, "Wow, you know a lot of people." No one ever comes with in everybody. Place. No one ever comes into my place. Though. That's the thing. You know, well, you know, your children. <laughs> yeah, I've had a lot of people up here over the last eleven years. Yeah, it's amazing when they they start to amount up. You, yeah. you know, you notice uh, like all the pitches that you're not in. Up down the left field line, Crawford makes his way over and in. There's two down in the end. Eastern Bank is teaming up with Adrian and Betsy Gonzalez to help local families by donating $1,000 to every home run Adrian hits this season through Select Habitat for Humanity Affiliates in Eastern Massachusetts. Two down in the fifth inning. Edwin Encarnacion, who flied out to left in the second. And strike one to Encarnacion, went off the bereavement list. The DH today, and generally at third base on a regular basis. But Jason Nix has been playing in his absence in each of the games of the series. Ball up the middle, Lowry to his left. The throw to first is in time. A dice game. Going on now, it's retired 10 in a row. Halfway through this one, it's 3 0 Red Sox.
Last half of the fifth inning back at Fenway Park. David Ortiz leading it off and taking ball one inside. Well, Ricky Romero is here in the fifth inning. Only two pitches deep into his outing. Full shift on here now for the Jays, this time on Ortiz. David walked in the first inning, single to right in the third inning. And knocked in a run. His base hit back in the third. Ball 3 3 and 0 oh in Aaron Sebia. Now to talk to Ricky Romero. And 94 pitches now for Romero here in the uh, fifth inning. Last time they had the shift on, but they didn't have the second baseman back on in the grass. You can see. Not really the complete shift. It was just playing him to pull. And he gets the ball by Aaron Hill for the base hit to drive in a run. In there for strike three and one. Ortiz, Lowry, then Crawford in the inning. And ball four to David Ortiz. He is on for the third time today. Fourth walk given up by Romero. Boston Red Sox baseball in Nesson is brought to you by Eastern Bank. Commitment, compassion, and love of the game. These are just some of the things Eastern Bank is made of. I know what we're made of at easternbank.com. Here's Jed Lowry with. Ortiz at first. Lowry's two for two in the game with two runs batted in. The singles to right field for Jed. And then for strike one and one. Luis Perez warming in the pen for the Jays. First action we've seen out there today. Well, had to throw a lot of pitches early. Threw 49 pitches through the first two innings. And nearing 100 now. Does not have an out in the fifth. Lowry hits a high drive to deep left. It keeps on going for Jed Lowry. And an amazing homestand and a great start to 2011. His two run shot puts the Sox on top 5 0. Oh, is he hot or is he hot? He took the first couple of the bats to the opposite field, then he gets a breaking ball from Romero and puts it into the monster seats. Here's the curveball from Romero, and there's the home run from Lowry. Four RBI in the afternoon. Hess and Hess Express are proud sponsors of the Red Sox and the Red Sox on Nesson during the 2011 Red Sox season. Hess and Hess Express will donate $500 to the Red Sox Foundation for every Red Sox home run hit. Hess and Hess Express committed to helping the cause. One and one. One more look from left field at the Lowry home run. His second of the season. <laughs> to left field. Travis Snyder going back to make the catch on the base of the track. And Carl Crawford is 0 for 3 today. One out in the fifth, and Jason Veritek coming up. Veritek fly out to center field in the second inning, reached on a fielder's choice in the third.
Coffee on base three times in the game today. Check chases after that pitch up and away, and it's 0 2. Jason really upset he missed that first fastball. It was right down the middle, then he chases one that's up and away. Outside, ball one. Walking a blast in this inning. Red Sox adding two runs. Romero at 106, as high as 113. One two misses for ball two two and two. Some high fastballs. He heads down to first base. Fifth walk given up by Romero, and it'll be his last. Pitching change from Fenway Park. Red Sox on top five nothing. Out in the last half of the fifth inning. Runner first and one down. As Jacoby Ellsbury is third at bat of the day. I'm going to deal with another lefty. And he wraps one foul. This call to the bullpen is brought to you by New England Ford dealers. Luis Perez first out of the pen here for John Farrell into the game. Another lefty after Ricky Romero goes four and a third innings. Perez pitched here. An inning and a third on Saturday against the Red Sox. No runs a hit. Two strikeouts for Luis Perez. In there for strike two to Jacoby Ellsbury. Ricky Romero with the five runs today. Career ERA mark against the Red Sox. Seven, hit six, nine in his career. Nine pitches today. He hits five runs. Still responsible for Veritek at first base. Everybody seems to have a team, and for Romero, that team seems to be the Red Sox. Total of five walks today. They hurt him. High pitch count through the first two innings. He had 49 pitches in the first two, and chase from the game in the fifth with one out.
thought about it. It did not go. They're going to check. It did not go apparently. Two and two. Jason Veritek at first base with one out in the fifth. Swing and a miss and Ellsbury strikes out. Strikes him out. First battery faces here in the fifth. Good movement on that fastball from Perez. A kind of a two seam fastball that goes down and in on Jacoby Ellsbury. Takes you down to the inning. Veritek at first base. Here's JD Drews had a nice day. Take strike one. Tripled and scored in the first inning. Walked in the second inning. And field hit in the fourth. On the ground up the middle, ranging is Escobar. The shortstop throws out J.D. Drew and Perez stops the bleeding. Red Sox score a couple runs on a two-run shot by Lowry. It's five nothing Boston. What the Red Sox did turn to Frank Webb's bat centers, the showroom of MWF. Find a showroom near you at frankweb.com. Five nothing. Red Sox on top of the Blue Jays. Top half of the sixth inning. 18 minute wait for Daisuke Matsuzaka returns to the mound here for the Red Sox. 73 pitches for Matsuzaka through the first five innings and. A stretch now where he has retired 10 batters in a row. Jason Nix takes strike one. SK has surrendered one hit and one walk. And both of those came in the first two innings. And then for strike two, and it's 0 and 2. Far and away the best outing so far of the year for Dice Game Matsuzaka. The seven day layoff. Well, he's done him some good. Strike three call makes quick work of Jason Nick's third K for Dice K. 
Now Dice with a couple of strikeouts on his slider, one on his fastball. This time the slider to Nix to pick up the strikeout. Ball just has life coming out of Dice K's hand today. Fifty strikes, twenty-six balls so far. The seventy-six pitches he's thrown. Fly ball to right off the bat of Escobar, sending Drew back a few steps. Two down. Time now for today's AT&T trivia question. Question was, who was the last player to lead the Red Sox in both home runs and in stolen bases in a season? Jody Ellsbury currently leading in both. Frank Wigginton. That's my call. Frank Wigginton. Two down here in the sixth inning. Corey Patterson 0 for 2. Sands went out to center. Ellsbury is there, and Dyske continues to roll along. The five pitch inning, 13 straight, mowed down by Dyske. 5 0 Red Sox. That outperforms the best oil based stains on the market. Find Arbor Code with your local Benjamin or retail. Last half of the sixth inning back at Fenway Park. 5 0 Red Sox on top out hitting the Jays 8 to 1. And Justin Pedroia taking ball one from Luis Perez. Starter today for the Blue Jays on the hook is Ricky Romero. Went to four and a third innings, eight hits, five runs, walked five, struck out four. There's a strike for Perez, one and one. Luis Perez came in in the fifth inning, retired both batters. He faced Ellsbury and Drew to get out of the fifth inning and starts the sixth inning. To Dustin Pedroia. Followed by Adrian Gonzalez and Kevin Euclid here in the bottom of the sixth inning. I was glad to see Ricky Romero go. He struck out three times against Ricky Romero. Ball 
four leadoff walk for Pedroia. Sixth walk. Given up by the Blue Jays. They've walked a ton in this series. Well, tomorrow night, right after Red Sox first pitch, join us for Red Sox Game Day Live, presented by Uno's and TC Heidi. At 9.30, John Lackey takes on a former foe as the Sox head out west to take on the Oakland A's. Plus, the Boston Globe's Dan Shaughnessy will have the latest news and notes from around the majors. Our coverage begins live tomorrow at 9, only on Nesson. Two total walks in this four game series for the Toronto Blue Jays pitching staff. Can that sit well with John Farrell. Mark Zepsinski is warming in the pen now for the Jays. With Luis Perez working here in the sixth inning. And some of the newer Red Sox players coming in here for their first Patriots Day in an 11 a.m. start time. Some of the guys rolling into the clubhouse this morning. A little bit different rolling in from morning baseball. Miller! One, two, broke it back, grounded softly towards third, mixed to second, and they get the lead runner. Justin Pedroia for the first out of the sixth. It is. It's time for a game break. And Tom Karen, TC. Okay, Tom. Thanks very much. Inside Fenway Park, it is five nothing. Red Sox on top. One out, one on. And Euclid's batting for the fourth time today. Euclid struck out in the first. He doubled in the third and scored. Fly to right in the fourth inning. You're right about this 11 o'clock start uh, and totally different for the players actually brings them back to their spring training days when they <laughs> have to get up so early for those uh, early morning workouts. Nobody took batting practice today unless you wanted to take it in the cage. This lays off and is ahead 3 and 0. Oh. Ortiz waiting on deck. One out here in the sixth inning. The Sox have had at least one base runner in every inning today. And have left a total of eight men on base. The lead at five nothing as Euclid takes strike one. It's generally a travel day for the Red Sox and no different this year. They're heading to. Oakland after the game today. Fly ball to right field, pretty deep. Jose Batista going back towards the pen. It's gone. Into the bullpen. Kevin Euclid, who nearly missed a home run earlier, doesn't miss this one. It's a two-run shot, and the Red Sox lead it seven to nothing. Euclid today showing power to the opposite field. One off the top of the wall earlier in the ball game back in the third inning. And now one over the wall into the bullpen. Nice inside out swing by Euclid generating a lot of power to the opposite field. That is home run number 114 for Kevin Euclid in his career. And 
You talk about an even split. 57 of those have come here at Fenway Park, and 57 of those have come on the road. That's an even split. Right down the middle, Jerry. That's the ball in the bullpen, and they refuse to touch it. It is a 7 0 Red Sox lead as David Ortiz takes ball one. So a lot of this pressing lifting over the last 48 hours with the Red Sox moving back to back games over the weekend. Some guys starting to loosen up a little bit. And that's really contributions from some guys who have been pressing early in the season. Yesterday, both the Ellsbury and Salta Labaki with good days at the plate. And starting to come around here as the Red Sox playing very good baseball at the tail end of this homestand. And in there for a strike, two and one. Now the key is to carry that momentum on a road and a very tough road trip for the Red Sox. Chopped into the shift right side. Nicks the third baseman and fires the first for the out. He swung around to the right and Ortiz is out number two of the inning. Jed Lowry is having some kind of homestand and some kind of game today. Single in the first to drive in two, a single in the third, and a two run home run in the fifth. So it's in strike one. Updated numbers on the seven game hitting streak for Jed Lowry. On the ground and another base hit for Jed Lowry. Four for four on the day. The Amica Pit Zone is brought to you by Amica Insurance. Amica Insurance is not just how you covet, it's how you treat it. And Jed Lowry's home run back in the fifth inning, a three pitch at bat. A fastball down and in. Another fastball inside part of the plate. And then Lowry takes the breaking ball out of the ballpark for the home run. Action in the Blue Jays pen, Octavio Dotel. Was running into trouble here in the sixth inning. One guy who's not been able to snap out of it yet is Carl Crawford. He was 0 for 3 today. He's flat out to left on two occasions and popped out to second base. Going back now, maybe he has high off the wall for Carl Crawford. Jed Lowry is going to try and score from first base. He will, and the wall ball double for Carl Crawford. It's eight nothing Sox. Now it has to feel awfully good for Carl Crawford, who has been big time struggling. He gets a fastball out over the plate. And the inside out swing finds that left field wall. Left handers with power love that left field wall here at Fenway Park. That is the day for Luis Perez, the first reliever for the Blue Jays. It's done. Pitching change from Fenway. It's now 8 nothing Red Sox.
bucks every Tuesday in this April. Earn at least double and up to five times the points just for playing slots. Only at Foxwoods Resort Casino and MGM Grand at Foxwoods. Foxwoods, official resort casino of the Boston Red Sox. Carl Carford had been three for his last 35, but he breaks out of it with a double that drives in the Red Sox eighth run. And it's 8 nothing Boston with two outs here in the sixth inning. And the Red Sox really getting it done offensively in this series. Last four games, 26 runs, and only 40 runs for the first 11 games of the regular season. Not done yet. Still batting here in the sixth inning. And it's Jason Veritek who takes strike one over the inside corner. This right-hander Red Sox have dealt with today. So Veritek turns around back from the left side. Tavio Dotel. His fifth appearance, 1-0 with the 6.75 earned run average. Opponents hitting 222 against Dotel. Dotel down on the count, 0-2. Dotel working here on Saturday against the Red Sox. Two-thirds of an inning, gave up a hit and a walk. Strikes out Veritek looking to end the inning. The Red Sox tack on three more and lead it eight nothing after six. Red Sox, Kevin Euclid with a home run swing, and Carl Crawford with a wall ball double. It's starting to come together. A relief for Carl Crawford. Things looking up in the Sox Nation as we head to the seventh inning, eight nothing. Red Sox on top of the Jays. Does came out Suzaka pitches by inning today. He's been very economical at the tail end, which is so unusual. Pitch strike in there for this game on Suzaka. Only two base runners on the day for the Toronto Blue Jays. Jose Batista single way back in the first inning, and then Travis Snyder walked in the second. 13 in a row, retired by Daisuke. Pitch 80, and he goes around as Batista. It's 0 2. He disagrees. Well, once again, that good hard slide up from Daisuke has had a good one this afternoon. Starts it off the outside edge, ends up off the plate, but Batista can't stay off it. 15 of 21 first pitch strikes for Dice Game Matsuzaka. 
the day, Jerry. He's throwing a lot of strikes like he did in the outing. He got beat up. I guess the difference is they're not down the middle. Their location, the location is much, much better today for Dice K. He's been on the corners with most of his stuff. In the dirt, and it's two and two. Even when he's thrown a fastball down the middle, he has elevated it a little bit, and he's got some pop-up outs, fly ball outs. Full count. Only the third three ball count of the day for Dice K. Fly ball headed out towards right center. Ellsbury moves into right center and makes the catch. Weekday mornings at 6, catch the Dennis and Callahan Morning Show on WEI Sports Radio Network and right here on Nesson. It's the number one morning show in Boston, so if you haven't tuned in yet, try it tomorrow to find out what makes the rest of New England already know this. It's Dennis and Callahan, weekday mornings at 6. in a row retired by Matsuzaka one out in the seventh Adam Lynn the batter. It's a foul down towards the tarp. Lynn is 0 for 2 he's grounded out to first base and flight out to left. Catch, but just barely. A lot of baseball showing in that right, right, right there. Snow cone. Very graceful on Euclid's spot right there. <laughs> Two down in the seventh inning. Aaron Hill, the batter. Ball one away. Flight out to left and flight out to center. 0 for 2 today. Broken bat, grounder to third. Euclid's to pick and throw. And that will end the inning. Seventh inning stretch here from Fenway Park. It is 8 to nothing. The Red Sox on top. And we'll keep it right here on this Patriots Day from Fenway Park. Well, God bless America. Our now posted on the center field video board. We thank you for your continued support of the Red Sox Foundation. Now please rise and stretch and prepare to sing along with our Fenway Park organist as he plays Take Me Out to the Ball Game presented by Coca-Cola.
AT&T trivia question. Was the last player to lead the Red Sox in both home runs and stolen bases in a season? Jerry said Skip Wigginton. And the answer is Carl Everett. 34 home runs, 11 stolen bases in 2000. Everett led the Sox 34 homers and 11 steals. Prior to Everett, Ellis Burks pulled off the feed in 1998. Had 21 home runs and 9 stolen bases. Has four Red Sox to lead and both have all but outfielders. Jim Rice in 75. Yaz led in both categories in 70. As we're entering the day, leading the Red Sox in both home runs and steals with three each. And Skip Wigginton is nowhere on the list. Yeah, sorry about that. I just the name I threw out there. I thought maybe that would be it. It's going to be Ellsbury leading it off here in the seventh. As Lydell popped out and struck out. When did the uh, first runners come across the finish line anyway? Pretty soon, right? Is it a little after 2 o'clock? Coming up on 1.30 down, so we've still got a little ways. And they look like people running. Yeah. <laughs> and one is in there to strike two. Maybe they start earlier now because it used to be like a little after 2 o'clock when the elite runners would cross the line. These, These do not appear to be them. These are other runners. Just about got it completed. Defensive changes for the Jays as John McDonald has checked in at second base. It's a day for Aaron Hill. One, two to Ellsbury. In the air to right field. Deep far, Batista at the wall. It's into the bullpen. Home run number four of the year for Jacoby Ellsbury. He's got the home run stroke going in 2011. Nine nothing Red Sox. Now once again, Ellsbury gets a low fastball right out over the plate. Hooks it and hooks it into the Red Sox bullpen. Drew lifts it in the air to left center field. Corey Patterson, the center fielder, coming in. And he makes the catch for the first out of the seventh inning. Red Sox game that goes into extra innings, or the Red Sox get a save. CBS Pharmacy will donate $500 to Children's Hospital Boston. CBS Pharmacy is the official pharmacy of the Boston Red Sox. Three home runs in the game today for the Red Sox. Season high in that category. Put the ball in there for strike one to Dustin Pedroia. He's been on three times today, two walks and a single. So he's sort of flying out to center field. Now the hold up could not. It's 0 and 2. Fredo Aceves warming in the pen for Boston. Red Sox are the season high in runs and in hits. They've not had one of these yet this season. And here it is, final game of the homestand. With a foul tip held on to, and he strikes out. In the second out of the seventh inning. Second strikeout for Jotel. Now Jotel going upstairs with the fastball, a foul tip, but into the mitt, into the webbing of the glove of Aaron Sevilla. Dunkin' Donuts is in its 13th year of hosting local youth groups and charitable organizations in the Dunkin' Dugout. Special seating section at Fenway Park. Thousands of children have had the chance to catch a Red Sox home game thanks to Dunkin' Donuts. Routes in the seventh inning for Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez struck out three times. It was all against Ricky Romero, left handed starter for the Jays today. Last time up, he reached on a fielder's choice and scored.
lead on the 93 mile an hour fastball. It's one and two. Lucas Sweets on deck. He's got one of the three home runs today for the Red Sox, along with Jed Lowry. Toby Ellsberg. Adrian Gonzalez gets into this one. Back towards the wall. Back goes Patterson. Can't catch it. Kind of gave up on it. And it was a ground rule double. Pulled back like he was going to run into the wall or something out there. Yeah, he started to extend his hand and his arm to see that if, if he was going to make the catch, then pulled it back. Right there, thinking he was closer to the wall than he actually was. Ball bounces over his head and into the stands for the ground rule double. So Euclid is inside. Euclid's two for four today, doubled and scored in the third, nearly hit one out hit on top of the wall. And he came back in, and the last time the two run shot. So this with more action, right handed Casey Jansen. Romero, the starter today, four and a third, giving up five runs. Luis Perez out of the pen first. He gave up three runs of his own. And Octavio Dotel has given up a run since coming in. A solo shot by Jacoby Ellsbury. Now Adrian Gonzalez at second base with two down. Nicholas fouls it off, two and two. Ortiz on deck. Sox with seven extra base hits on the day. Lucas in the air to left field. Travis Snyder back onto the track to make the catch. And ends the inning. Home run for Jacoby Ellsbury adds to the Red Sox lead on top, nine to nothing. Lowry has been absolutely on fire, and today, in a 4 for 4 effort, it includes a two run home run in the fifth inning. Well, Crawford has really been struggling in his first three plate appearances that fly out three times until this wall ball double would score Jed Lowry. All part of the
the Red Sox nine run output, but the pitching spectacular today. Dice game on Suzaka seven innings, one hit, no runs, a walk and three strikeouts. The best outing for Dice game he's had in a Red Sox uniform. Jed Lowry and the Red Sox have banged out 13 hits. They're out hitting the Blue Jays 13 to 1. As we move along to the eighth inning, some changes for the Red Sox. First in right field. J.D. Drew's day is over. Darnell McDonald checks in defensively in right. And the new Red Sox pitcher is Alfredo Aceves. Comes on after the seven innings from Dice Kid. His fifth appearance. No record at 2.70 ERA. He's worked in six and two thirds. Four hits, two walks, five Ks, and opponents hitting at 182 against Alfredo Aceves. Won't save here on Friday against the Blue Jays. Squirrel is hitting pitched. As the pitch is in there for strike over the outside corner. Pierre and Sebia fly out to center field in the second inning, struck out swinging in the fifth. On the ground is short. Lowry picks it and throws out Aaron Sebia. One down. Before Dice K departed, he retired the last 16 that he faced. So that's 17 Blue Jays have been retired in a row now. An amazing performance this afternoon by Daisuke Matsuzaka. Certainly different than uh, what we've seen so far this season. Pitching line brought to you by Ace Ticket. And there are the numbers: 89 pitches. Did it so economically. 41 in the first two innings. 48 in the last five innings of work for Daisuke Matsuzaka, who rarely is economical on the back end of outings. It was today. Up the middle, Lowry on the change of direction. The throw is not. Yes, it's in time. Picked by Gonzalez. Nice play on both ends. Now that ball had a ton of spin on it, heading out to Lowry at shortstop, and he actually had to go to the backhand to make the play on it. Watch this ball kick back on Lowry right there, and then had to quickly release it to get the out at first base on Snyder. Very close play at first base. Real close. Yeah. Real, real <laughs> close. <laughs> Two down here in the eight. You know what I mean? Real, real close. Really close. <laughs> 18 in a row retired by the Red Sox now. Edwin Encarnacion, 0 for 2, and breaking ball kind of buckled him. Fly to left, bounce to short. Boston Red Sox baseball on Nesson is brought to you in part by Eastern Bank. At Eastern Bank, we believe something as simple as your checking account shouldn't come with a lot of strings attached. Eastern free checking. See just how good a checking account can feel. This one is line foul down towards Canvas Alley and into it. Foul off to the right out of play. Sevis with a 1 2. Canacion pops it up, foul ground. Euclid's coming down to make the catch. 18 in a row, retired.
Fired by Red Sox pitching. 9 nothing Boston. Jim get the breakdown of Vesky Matsuzaka's performance in the series finale, including the manager's perspective from the press room. Plus, the guys will answer your questions and keep those tweets coming. It's all coming up right after the game on WB Mason's Extra Innings Live. Live from Yaki Way. As we head to the last half of the eighth inning. A check swing foul off the bat of David Ortiz. The pitcher for the Blue Jays there. Fourth of the day, it's Casey Jansen. The sixth appearance, second of the series. So I've given up a run of three and two thirds. And it's sitting at 286 against Casey Jansen. Takes over for Octavio Dotel, an inning and a third. With two hits and a run. The home run by Jacoby Ellsbury. Didn't walk anybody and struck out two. Ortiz pops it up in the shallow right center and coming from right is Bautista to make the catch. Time now for a look at the road ahead brought to you by Safeco Insurance. Right after today's game the Red Sox will depart Boston for the West Coast. It will be a three city nine game ten day trip. The Sox with stops in Oakland Los Angeles and Baltimore. Before returning home for a series with the Seattle Mariners and four more with the Angels. In total, the Red Sox played 13 of their next 16 against American League West teams. And they hope to fare better than they did against the Texas Rangers, the first American League West team that they dealt with earlier this season in Arlington. Jed Lowry, four for four today. Singles and a home run today for Lowry. Elevates and he chases the strikeout. First time Blue Jays have been able to get Judd Lowry today. Two down. Elevates the fastball ahead in the count. Lowry can't stay off it. Jed with a four for five afternoon. Here is Carl Crawford. Got a hit slump with a wall ball double to drive in a run in the sixth inning.
action in the Red Sox pen. Tim Wakefield warming up. We've seen seven innings from Dice K, an inning from Aceves, and looks like Wakefield's getting ready for the ninth. Ball three, three and zero. Oh. Strike and it's three and one. Shot off the glove of Jansen, kicks out to McDonald, bare hands and throws. What a play. John McDonald, one of the best defensive players in the game, able to make that play. It's 9 0 Red Sox. Dunkin' Donuts. AT&T. New England Subaru dealer. And by Sullivan Tire. Ninth inning back at Fenway Park. Nine nothing. Red Sox on top of the Jays. Out hitting the Blue Jays. 13 to one today. Tim Wakefield comes in for the ninth inning. His sixth appearance of the year. A record for Wake, a 5.79 earned run average, and opponents hitting with 229. Jason Nix leading it off and taking strike one. Nix sold for two from the number nine spot of the Jays' order. He has popped out to third and struck out looking. And drops in there for strike going two. Last working in the Tampa Bay series. Which he went three and a third innings, giving up six hits, five runs, four earned. First appearance of this series against the Jays. And that outing in which he did go three and a third is his longest relief outing since 2002 at Detroit. And the two pitches popped up. Jed Lowry at shortstop. Back onto the dirt. To make the catch round number one of the night. That is 20 in a row retired by Red Sox pitching. SK, who 
retired the last 16 batters he faced today. Fredo Seves, a 1 2 3 8. Midfield is out, number one of the ninth. The last Blue Jays runner was back in the second inning. Travis Snyder with a walk. The only base hit the Jays have today came with two outs in the first inning. Jose Batista. Center field back towards the wall in the monster seats and gone. I think it is gone. Man reaches out and grabs it. It's a home run for Yanel Escobar, and there is the indication of the third base umpire Doug Eddings. At first, it looked like a fan might have reached over and interfered with it, but Eddings is making the call immediately that it was a home run. Escobar. Gets the knuckleball, picks up his second home run of the season. I think the fan did reach over Jerry, but I think it was a home run too. Uh, I believe I believe you're right, Don. Because it didn't appear to hit the top of the wall and ricochet back like it normally does. It is off the glove of that fan. This one is popped up down third baseline. Euclid's foul ground will make the catch. Good running ground. And there are two outs here in the ninth. Right, Until the home run by Yanel Escobar had the only hit of the day. The Blue Jays a single back in the first. No errors for Toronto. Ball two, two, and one. Batiste to the left, Crawford back onto the track. Game over. The Red Sox in the most complete victory of 2011 from a pitching standpoint. Offensive standpoint, pretty fun day at the yard for the Boston Red Sox. Well, it was, Don. You know, it, it was one of those easy games for the Red Sox where they get a nice, comfortable lead in the ball game, score a bunch of runs, they get great pitching from Matt Sazaka. I'll tell you, Dice K continues to just, you know, you see an outing like that and you say, why can't you see more of that? I mean, nothing today was down the middle. Everything seemed to be on the corners, that complete command of his stuff. A terrific outing, terrific day all around for the Boston Red Sox. And now, they hit the road. Red Sox finish the homestand five and four as they win today nine to one. For Jerry Remy and Heidi Watney, I'm Don Rosillo saying good afternoon from Fenway Park. Join us again tomorrow night as the Red Sox begin a nine-game road trip. First game is against the Oakland A's. Our live coverage begins at nine o'clock. This has been a presentation of Nets and New England's Most Watched Sports Network. Time now for a preview of WBA Six Extra Innings Live. Here's Tom Carey.